Hi guys, it's Kaylee Juzik again here with Destiny Equine. And today on our Tidbit Tuesday, we are gonna talk about fire safety with your horses, which is something that is so important to me, especially since last week, a close family friend of ours just lost their home. And I thought that it'd be a great time with August being a really big fire season for us here in Nevada. And I'm sure across the country, everyone's struggling with this, people losing their homes and wildfires. I just thought it would be something great to touch on. Let me know what you guys think. All right, so to start out, I want to suggest that you guys have a plan, a game plan for your family, for your ranch, for the employees. Everyone knows if there was a fire, exactly what would happen and where you would take the animals. I suggest that you have contacts way across the city if you can so that you know for sure that if your area is on fire and in danger that you can take your animals over there and you won't have to worry about them. So I would talk to a close family friend of mine or some contacts that I've made through my business and say, hey, if there was a fire, do I have permission to bring my animals here, my horses, my cattle, whatever you may have. Just so you have that plan in place so you know you're not in a panic, you know, okay, here's where we're going, here's where we're going to meet, go. You just want it out there, you want everyone to know what's going on, it makes it, the situation so much less stressful when you have a plan, at least for me. I want to know what we're going to do, what the plan is, with all the chaos that's already going to be going on with evacuating your animals and your family and getting your household items out of there that you cannot live without. We just want a game plan. We know where we're going, but everything's going to be okay. So I'm located on the outskirts of Reno. So Reno's got this little city right here, and basically there's a 360 degree area where all the outskirts of Reno is horse area. So I live on the west end of Reno, so I have contacts, contacts on the north end, the south end, the east end, so I have a couple of different places where I have my option where I can take my horses. Now I personally have never had to evacuate, thank the Lord, but we have had certain areas in Reno where our horse areas had to have an evacuation. And the city of Reno was really great by having a game plan where all the horses would just go to the fairgrounds where the Reno Rodeo is held. So if you don't have contacts, make sure you know where that plan is in place with the city that you're going to go to your fairgrounds, your local community arena, wherever that is, make sure that you know where you're going. Okay, next step, knowing where all your trailer stuff is. I want you to know exactly which hitch goes with which trailer, which vehicle you would use. Make sure your trailer tires are good. That is such a big deal. Make sure the trailer tires have air at all times. Make sure your trailer is registered. I don't care if you tow once a year. Make sure that everything is in place in case of an emergency. You should check on that. Get your trailer maintenance. Make sure it is safe to carry your animals. Our animals are our babies and we want to make sure that we're towing correctly and we have everything in place. The trailer is the most dangerous place that you will ever, ever put your horse. You need to make them as safe as possible. Next week on our Tuesday tidbit, we are going to be talking about trailer safety. So make sure you guys tune in for that. It's going to be a fun one. Okay, so when we're getting our horse out, this is something that I've done with all my horses. I make sure that I have a good, sturdy leather, I'm sorry nylon halter here that is good, it's not all worn out, it's strong still, and I get a little dog tag, I just got this one from PetSmart, it says my horse's name, I don't know if you guys can see that, horse's name, my phone number, and my street address. Now my horses aren't at my house, they're at a ranch down the street, but I want people to know where I live personally so I can get my animals back. Something people sometimes forget to do. This is a pretty big thing. In all the chaos, they think, okay, well, we'll just, if for some reason you couldn't get your horses out, God forbid, but we'll just open the gate and they'll get out. You can't think like that. You cannot think like that. Because horses, they're very intelligent animals, but at the same time, they only know so much. Okay? They didn't go to school. They only know what you've taught them and what their natural instinct tells them to do. So, I do this with my animals. If God forbid I couldn't get them out and I had to just let them go, I would put this nylon halter on them, unclip the lead rope, and I would bring them out of their 
paddock stalls or out of the barn, shut the barn, make sure all of the horses are out and shut the doors so they cannot go in there. Horses are known in fires to go back into the barn and sit in there and it's awful but they burn to death. It ha used to happen all the time. People thought just open the doors and they'll get themselves out. Unfortunately that's not the case usually. So make sure that you close the stalls and then also something I would suggest if you can so they don't get trapped and if your property is all enclosed in fence, bring them off of your property and shut your property gate. Get them if you have time. I know that it's hard but if you can make sure you get them out there and let them go. Another thing, work on your horses floating in the trailer. You don't want to have to deal with a horse that won't get in in all the chaos. If that does happen and you have just one horse that won't get in, get the horses in that you can get in and pony the horse out of your truck window, have your kids pony them out the truck window, whatever you have to do. A lot of times traffic will be moving so slowly that you have time where you can pony the horse and just to get them to safety and deal with them later. Okay, another thing that I want to talk to you guys about is your other animals. I don't have cows or anything, so you're going to have to look for somebody else to tell you what you're supposed to do with your cows. Um, I'm going to talk to you about your dogs and your cats and your little animals like that. So, I have two big dogs and they're both my lab. He's kind of older. He does whatever he wants to do. He doesn't listen very well. But normally, I don't put them in crates when I take them on car rides. I just let them hang out in the back seat. My um, Australian Shepherd, she does whatever she's told. She's there where she's supposed to be. She's one of the best trained dogs that I've ever seen. But during the fire, I don't want to deal with it. I want to know that they're safe and where they're supposed to be. So we have those big tra um, crates that you can put your dogs in. Like if you take them, we use ours for duck hunting. So when they're all wet, you don't want to throw them in the back seat. We have those big crates. I have one for each dog. So you can put the dogs in the crate, put them in the truck bed, and they're done. We don't have to worry about them when we're dealing with the horses and getting stuff from the inside. And then we have a little cat crate, and then the bunny just has its crate. Throw it on the truck bed, done. Those animals are done. Worry about your family. Get your photos out. Get your important documents. Photos are, are such a big thing because you cannot replace those. But the most important thing is getting everybody out safe. That is the most important thing to me is getting my animals and my family out safe. As long as we're safe, everything else is replaceable. It's hard to lose everything in your life, but you know, if everyone's safe, that means the most. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry, my nose is kind of clogged up from allergies and having to deal with all the smoke that's been going on around here. This was just something personally that touched me when my friends lost their home and I wanted to share some information with all of you and I hope that it helps. Thank you guys so much for tuning into our Tuesday tidbits or tidbit Tuesdays, whichever. I haven't really decided what I'm going to call them. I have to think about it a little bit more. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night.